You sitting on the couch, Ashy. You're watching TV and your life is passing you by. Keep procrastinating over and over. Well, maybe I'll get my skin together next year or maybe next semester. No! Do it right now! It'll work with you after work or you can use it before work. You can do whatever you need to do to use it. Go talk to somebody right now. They have to help you. You spend all day on the phone anyhow. Why don't you go to the website that's going to help you in your future? All you got to do is pick up the phone and go to www.askkicking.com. Why are you making it complicated? It's easy. Shop Ash Kicking Online at www.ashkickin.com. Do you feel stressed out about your hair problems? Break free. Welcome to upcare.com, where your hair's beauty and health always come first. Looking to add a little volume? Our hair extensions, made from the highest quality materials, give you a stunning new look without adversely affecting your natural hair. Come join us at upcare.com and let's make hair magic together. Your journey to stunning healthy hair starts here. Forty-five back to twenty-three men's bedroom energy. It really works. Believe me, this will be the best money you've ever spent. All natural, ancient formula for improved bedroom performance. Thank me later. Stop searching for solutions. This is it. It really works. All natural herbs and plants. Increase your potency and bedroom experience. Light the fire. Increase the desire. Life changing. Relationship Saver. Get ready to ignite the spirit of Black History Month like never before. Join us at the Hidden History Museum in the heart of Los Angeles for an electrifying one-year anniversary celebration. Saturday, February 24th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars for an unforgettable evening. Experience our comedy show with a stellar lineup of the hottest new comedians. Hosted by Tariq Nasheed and Dwan B. But that's not all. Indulge in complimentary food and drinks and music that will keep you grooving all night long. This exclusive event is by RSVP only, so don't miss out on the celebration of a lifetime. Reserve your spot now by visiting HiddenHistoryMuseum.com for tickets. Let's honor and celebrate Black History Month in style. See you there! Boom! There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, and here I am. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tariq Radio Show, live right here on YouTube. How y'all feeling, man? Great vibes, great energy, ladies and gentlemen. Great vibes, great energy. Glad to have y'all in here. Hope you guys had a great weekend so far, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to retweet the broadcast and let everybody know that we are live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let everybody know that we're live this very moment, ready to chop up game as we always do. Let me throw one more post up real quick on Facebook. Hold on one second. And by the way, I want y'all to really, really soak in my phenomenal foundational black American um, hairline and haircut. Shout out to my barber who came through a couple of hours ago. Shout out to that FBA hairline. But man, we got a lot to talk about tonight, family. A lot of stuff to talk about. And by the way, all my LA people, don't forget... Even if you're not in L.A., you guys can come out and join me and the family next Saturday at the Hidden History Museum. We've got a lot of great comics co-hosted by our good brother, Dwan B. We've got a lot of very funny comics coming in next week. The comedy game is real hot right now because of these interviews that's been going on. So you guys want to go to these comedy shows to see what's going on. You guys want to see what's going on? Somebody asked, did I have a shirt on? Yes, I got a shirt on. Hold on. I got a shirt on under this. Now, hold on. 
Hold on. I got a shirt on under this now. Let's stop playing. All right. We, we had a dude in here acting a little moist. <laughs> what you got on under that, Tyree, nigga? None of your business. All right. And I mind you to stay out of my affairs over here. That was very uncomfortable. I thought it was a woman. It's a dude asking if I had a shirt on under this. Now, I know it's like real late over there where you are. I know it's around two something and you're trying to do something, but we don't rock like that over here, sir. We don't rock like that over here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I see some janky scout people in here hating on my robust foundation of black American hairline. I mean, look at it. Look at it and, and, and accept it. Just accept it. All right? Accept it before it destroys your spirit. All right? My foundation of black American hairline is phenomenal. I thank my parents. <laughs> but listen, listen. A lot of stuff we got to get into. Just waiting on everybody to pile on in the room. We're just waiting on everybody to pile on in here. People are coming in here very quickly. A lot of stuff we got to hit on. First of all, our good sister Beyonce knows. And I touched on this a little bit the other day. Beyonce has a country song out of Texas Hold'em. Phenomenal song. Phenomenal song. Was that? Yeah, you're FBA, but your hairline is janky. That's okay. I, I, look, there are some people out here who are FBA who do have the janky hairlines. That, that happens sometimes. That happens because of chemicals and pollutants in the air and um, certain um, foods and, and preservatives and, and additives that's in the food. I understand that. Sometimes... The FBA family will get some janky hairlines going on. I understand that. But luckily for me, um, my genetics fought through the pesticides and all the stuff in the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> my genetics came through. <laughs> and some of you too. Somebody sometimes yeah, you you were some of you your hairlines fell victims to the to the pesticides. I get it. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, these pollutants out here ain't no joke. It's a lot of stuff that's going on out here. That's why they're saying um, the millennials look older. That's a whole thing. That a lot of the people now, the millennials, look way older. Whereas, what, Generation, what are we, Generation X? The ones who we grew up in the, the 70s and 80s? What are we? What were we? Generation X? I don't know what. It's Gen Z, Gen X, the millennials. Those of us who grew up in the 70s and 80s, what was our generation called? What, we came right after the civil rights generation. What was that, family? What was that? If yeah, we came along, we were born after the civil rights movement. Well, we, we're Gen X, right? Yeah, Gen X. So the Gen Xs, we, we held up, we preserved pretty well, the Gen Xs. They didn't have, you know, we didn't get all the, the pesticides and all of that in the foods. A lot of us were, um, you know, we got sent down to the South or even lived in the South for the summer. So you, you didn't have the, the genetic modifications in the foods and the, the drugs didn't come around until the eight. Well, you, you had the drugs in the 70s. That was mostly in the big urban areas. Yeah. And only a select few. Most most black folks knew to stay away from the, the angel dust and the quaaludes and the LSD. Most of us stayed away from that stuff. It ain't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the 80s, it got a little different. Then we started getting the chemicals and stuff. The, remember, in the 70s, everything was about natural. Everything In the 70s, everything was about natural. Wearing afros. Um, weren't, women weren't wearing a lot of makeup then. Um, the food was a little more organic at the time. They, they didn't start, you know, they were experimenting, trying to figure out how to poison the foods then. But they just, they weren't doing it in big numbers. Yeah. 
So around when the 80s came around, things got a little different. Yeah, we played in dirt and we caught fireflies. Remember that? Or, or lightning bugs. I haven't seen a lightning bug. Family, when was the last time y'all seen lightning bugs? I talked about this before. When was the time you saw a lightning bug? I haven't seen a lightning bug in decades. I haven't seen any. Lightning bugs were the business. How many of y'all remember the lightning bugs? You lived in the South, you go outside and lightning bugs all over the house. I mean, all over the, the, the backyard. And we would catch them with jars. Right? I ain't seen lightning bugs in years, man. The lightning bugs are gone. Even when I visit the South, I don't see no lightning bugs no more. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, yeah, we would, keep, we would keep them in jars. We put them in jars, and we'd have a good time out there in the backyard. They died out in 98. You saw some in North Carolina? Yeah, but yeah, they, I, they're gone. Well, we used to call them lightning bugs. That's what we used to call them. What y'all used to call them? We used to call them lightning bugs because they would light up. Huh? June bugs or whatever. We call them lightning bugs down in Alabama. Huh? Or they, they, white people call them fireflies. We call them lightning bugs. So the game was different. It was a different vibe. It's a whole different vibe. What is my wife texting me? It's a whole different vibe. Now in the 80s, when the 80s came around... That's when we start getting the jerry curls. We start putting all them chemicals in our hair. We start putting all of them chemicals. And then the crack came. So we had jerry curls and crack. And then everything went to hell. All right? Man, we that was a deadly combination. Jerry curls and crack did a number on us. And then you had the children born from the jerry curls and crack. Yeah? Yeah? Just imagine them Jerry Curl crack homes. Huh? Them Jerry Curl and crack homes were devastating to the community. So the energy got different. The energy changed. Well, but it is what it is. Yeah, salute to Stoney Jackson. Oh, yeah, we all had the Jerry Curls back in the day. We all had them. But let me let me get to what I'm talking about. So we're talking about our good sister, Beyonce Knowles. She has a phenomenal song out, Texas Hold'em. Killing the charts right now, killing the game. And I want y'all to remember, they've been, they've been hating on our sister. There were some country stations that didn't want to play her. This is nothing new. Remember when um, Beyonce did a song, a country song, some years back, and they would not allow her to get that song nominated on the country um, category for the Grammys and one of them award shows. I think it was the Grammys. But they would not let her enter her song in the running to be nominated. They did not allow her to do it. Now, they let every Tom, Dick, and Harry hop up and get in a rap category, R&B category. They have no problem with that. At all. But when Beyonce is trying to hit them country charts, everybody wants to cry foul. Now, I want y'all to understand something. People, they've been complaining, the dominant society, about Beyonce and her country song, and all oh, of this is them trying to take over. Now, let me tell you something. They didn't have a problem with the country song by Lil Nas X. Now, Lil Nas X did a country slash hip hop song. Now, why didn't they have a problem with that? Now, understand something. At first, if y'all don't remember, some of y'all who don't remember, they did have a problem with Lil Nas X's song when it first came out. 
Let me see if I can find a, a, an article about that. When Little Nas X first came out, they actually did somewhat have a problem with them. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. One second. Uh, let me look that up, see if I can find that article. Uh, da, 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 da. Bill, okay, so what they did, um, they removed him from the country charts. It was controversial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen, here, here it is. Okay. Here's the article. All right. Check this out. Some of y'all forgot. Now, Lil Nas X, they removed him. Hold on, where we at? Where we at? Let me let me see where I'm going here. Hold on, zero. Where we at? Y'all, bear with me for one second. Let me get this together. Hold on, let me get this together. Where we at? Where we at? All right, this right here. All right, so right here. Lil Nas X, this was in 2019. Old Town Road controversy reveals problems um, beyond just race. The debate about Lil Nas X's number one hit. Let me see. Where they talk about it? Uh, where they go? Da, 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 where they talk about it? So basically, they took the song off the country charts. Then they put it back on when he did the thing with... Um, Billy Ray Cyrus. So when he did the song, with when he remade it with Billy Ray Cyrus, they put it back on. And also, when he came out as being a flaming queen, they were like, oh, okay, that's not a problem. Yeah, he was a bait and switch. Lil Nas X was a bait and switch. But yeah, when um he came out and said, hey, guys, you know I got a hankering for Bucci Cat. The white supremacist was like, oh, okay. Oh, well, he come on, let him in then. He's safe. They really had no problem then. When he got with um, Billy Ray Cyrus and then when he came out the closet, they had no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah, they have no... These guys go from rap to rock to country. Um, remember the rapper Everlast, the white boy Everlast? Didn't he do a country song? Everlast was down with the Rhyme Syndicate, I think, back in the day. He was down with the House of Pain and those guys. Um, but yeah, I think he did a country song. So yeah, as long as you know Lil Nas X was flaming, they had no no problem with that whatsoever. But with Beyonce, that's a problem. Because now there's a, they understood that Lil Nas X, he's the token Negro. He's not going to bring other black people with him. So they were fine with that. So he, that's fine. And, and, and he's getting co-signed by one of our guys, the white guy. So yeah, you can get on the country charts if you bring a white man with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you bring the white man with you, let him walk you in and you be his little... Um, Negro flunky, we have no problem. Yeah, we'll accept that. That's fine. You know? But now Beyonce, she's not coming in co-signed by anybody. She's coming in hard and heavy. And it's a hot song that everybody likes. And black people like the song. I love the song. This ain't Texas. Oh, I love it. And you got the Beehive, all of the Beyonce fans out here. They got some line dances and they got TikTok videos going viral. And, you know, some of the male Beyonce fans, they just, some of y'all, where the, the male Beyonce Beehive guys, where the, where the male Beehive, y'all just couldn't wait to put on some Daisy Dukes and some boots to get out there and do what you do. They really couldn't wait. So they out there showing out and niggas with Daisy Dukes and cowboy boots doing line dances. So they got an issue with Beyonce. So th this week, the dude who used to be on the Dukes of Hazard, the show we watched back in the 80s, where they drove around in the General Lee car, a car with a Confederate flag on the top of it. We didn't know what we were watching. 
We, I used to love that show, but it was only a limited amount of things on tele television. It was Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, um, The Dukes of Hazard, Love Boat. <laughs> we had to watch stuff like that. But we still we liked The Dukes of Hazard to see all the car crashes and the car chases and all of that stuff. So the dude from the Dukes of Hazzard, and from my, what I understand, this guy has been put on by Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry has had him in some of his productions. So this guy gets on the OAN network, which is a propaganda mill for a lot of the alt-right, right-wing gibberish. And did y'all hear what this guy had to say about Beyonce and by proxy, black people? We got to understand, these people talk in in terms of um, using black people as proxies. So this is him talking about Beyonce's song. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Where is this? Where is this? All right. So listen to this. All right. John Schneider. Now listen to this, guys entertainment industry just won't leave any area alone right they just have to seize control over every aspect don't they they've got to uh, they've got to make their let me let me take it back so you can hear everything she said i don't want to leave anything out entertainment industry oh, okay. just won't leave any area alone right they just have to seize control over every aspect don't they They've got to uh, they've got to make their mark just like a dog in a uh, in a dog walk park you know every dog has to mark every tree yeah. right so that's what's going on here uh shania and the other folks you talked about what they did is they they were in country music and they went out mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing but people coming into country music have a because uh, i know a little something about country music <laughs> and um they they see okay so he compared and people are talking about this he compared beyonce to a dog peeing on a tree marking territory, which is a proxy for black people. These black people are trying to mark their territory, trying to take over. Let me play that one more time. I want y'all to feel what this man said. Let me one more time. Hold on. Hold on. Payment industry just won't leave any area alone, right? They just have to seize control over every aspect, don't they? They've got to uh, they've got to make their mark just like a dog in a uh, in a dog walk park. You know, every dog has to mark every tree. Yeah. Right. So that's what's going on here. Uh, Shania and the other folks you talked about, what they did is they they were in country music and they went out. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's one. OK, yeah, there's a part where he said something and I want to see where it is, where he said something about taking over. That's the part I want to play. Let me see where that is. Hold on one second. That's the part I want to play. He mentioned something about taking over. Da, 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 da. Where is that clip? And oh, okay, I think this is it right here. Okay, da, 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 da. okay, this is a longer version of it. Okay, now let's check this out. I think this is the part where he was talking about he the the taking over part is what I wanted to play. Hold on, let me play. This is a longer clip. Hold on of Hollywood eating its own. Uh, that was a perfect little segue for me here. Country Western uh, music, I think, has certainly changed quite a bit over the years. Uh, there's a lot more crossover music and acts uh, like Shania Twain and Carrie Underwood, just to name a few. But now Beyonce dropped a new single. Uh, Look how stank she's... Now Beyonce! Now Beyonce! Texas Hold'em Sunday, and... An ACW radio station wasn't playing it because they said it wasn't really a CW song. Now, after right. that, after they got bombarded by Beyonce fans, they relented. But I want your the hell it wasn't. It is a country and western song. What kind of I'm white and I say so stuff is this? It is a country and western song. Thoughts on this because it feels like the lefties in the entertainment industry just won't leave any area alone, right? They just have to seize control over every aspect, don't they? They seize control. Huh. Seize control. Hold on to that one for a minute. Got to, uh, they've got to make their mark just like a dog in a, uh, in a dog walk park. You know, every dog has to mark every tree, yeah. right? So that's what's going on here. Uh, Shania and the other folks you talked about, what they did is they, they were in country music and they went out. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's one thing. But people coming into country music have a because uh, I know a little something about country music, and um, they they seem to think that it's it's easy or it's simple or somehow it's uh, it's not as sophisticated as the music that they that they sing otherwise. Okay. So take control. So they they want to come in and take control. Now, I want y'all to see the assumption is when the black folks come in, they're going to take control of it. They automatically assume that black people are going to take control of it. You see? They're going to seize control. That's a very interesting choice of words because they understand how thorough we are they understand how mediocre they are. They understand mediocrity. They understand that they had to rustle this genre away from us and then lock us out of it so that they could compete. They can only compete by locking us out of genres that we pretty much created. They lock us out of it because they know once we get our hands back on it, we're going to take it back over. That's why the name of the, the broadcast today is Beyonce, the queen of country. I'm saying she is. She has the hottest country song out right now. One of the best sounding country songs out in a long time. She comes from the lineage of the people who created country music. Beyonce Knowles is one of our new queens of country music, ladies and gentlemen. We've already taken it back over. Just with that one single. That one single has these people shaking in their boots because it has style, flavor. It, it has that FBA spirit on it, which is what they're afraid of. See, I always talk about that foundational black American spirit that ruffles people's feathers. I got a name for it. I call it Mojara. We have a Mojara spirit. That's the name of it. We got to start naming this stuff. I call that FBA spirit, energy, soul, aura. I call it Mojara. That's a God spirit and a God energy that don't nobody have. It's very specific to foundational black Americans. You understand? I call it the Mojara spirit. It's a combination of your mojo and your aura. That's something that we have that don't nobody else have, man. That, that energy, when we put that FBA energy on it, when we put that FBA energy on it, they're like, oh, God, it's over. Just like when Tiger Woods even though he has some non-FBA energy, that dad had that Mojara energy. When that dad put that Mojara spirit on him, he got in the golf, they were like, oh, this nigga. And he took it over. You then? And he took it over. Ladies and gentlemen. They don't, with that Mojara spirit that we have as foundational black Americans, it intimidates people, it angers people, people try to latch on to it and take it for themselves. They're always trying to capture that natural energy that we have, that natural spirit that we have, ladies and gentlemen. You understand? They're always trying to rustle it away. Family, and I, I really want black people to really, really get this. Country music is a foundational black American creation. Family, the white people who were into early country, they were proud to acknowledge the black people they took it from. That was a way to show how authentic you were as a white person. Do you understand what I'm telling you? They made no bones back in the day telling you that this Negro taught me. Really? Oh, you the real deal. See, understand, back in the Jim Crow era, 
They understood that Mojara spirit that we had. They understood the Mojara spirit. We couldn't, nobody could articulate it by words, but they knew there was a certain energy and spirit about foundational black Americans that they had to latch on to. Even though we were subjugated, that's what the subjugation was about. They knew how thorough we were. They had to stop us from taking over. They had to have militarized posts to segregate us, to monitor our movements. Because they knew how thorough we were. So they would ease over in controlled environments and get the game from us all the time. You understand? They prided themselves on getting stuff from us. Um, the medicines, I told you guys about the root work doctors and the, the conjure doctors. White people would go to black people to get healed. We were the go-to people. We were the go-to people to get food from. That's why on those old food boxes, they would always have us on them to show you this is an authentic meal that you're getting. Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben's, all of these people. This is authentic. Look, there's a black person, the cream of wheat man. You understand? That was a mark to say this is authentic. This is where we got the recipes from. Back in the day, the, the people in the dominant society, they would be proud to tell you where KFC stole the recipe from, allegedly, from a black woman for KFC chicken and all of these people. So these country music artists, yeah, yeah, the real McCoy, um, Elijah McCoy had um, a product that was so thorough, white people didn't even want an imitation of it because white people would steal our stuff. And Elijah McCoy made a product that was so thorough for machines the white people tried to make imitations of it. The customers would say, hey, what is this? I'm not going to buy it if it's not the real McCoy, meaning if it's not from the Negro, I'm not going to buy it because I know the Negro put some real work into it and did it the right way. I only want the real McCoy. The real McCoy mindset was major back then. They knew what black folks were capable of. They knew where they were getting the game from. And these people, when it came to your Jack Daniels whiskey, we know that he got it from an enslaved brother. You know? You say KFC is an Irish recipe. Are you on Irish crack? Are you on Irish crack, Ronan? So wait, we got somebody named Ronan in the room talking about KFC comes from an Irish recipe. Well, damn it, how come chicken in Ireland don't taste like KFC now? Hmm? How come food by non-black people all over the British Isles are trash? The only thing good over there is porridge and fish and chips. Now, if you say somebody created some fish and chips, I might pop my collar to you. So you better stop. You would have some chicken places in Ireland that taste good, and you don't. So you better stop that, Ronan. I, ain't, ain't no such thing as Kentucky Irish chicken, all right? That anybody is checking for. Y'all going to stop with this? The, these people in the dominant society always trying to attribute our food dishes that we create to somebody else. They always do that. That, that comes from us. <clears throat> All of these delicious food dishes, these food dishes come from us. You think? We might have had slight influences, I won't even say influences, we had probably slight raw material and we had to put that Majara flavor on it. We probably, just because somebody gave us a potato that was from Ireland, you didn't fix that potato like we did and mash it and season it like we did. You understand? So you can't say we got anything from some damn Irish if you didn't season it and put that love in it and that Majara spirit in it. See, that's real important. You got to put that spirit in it. The, the, the taste comes from the spirit you put in the cooking. 
You understand? The taste comes from the spirit you put in there. Because we're such angelic beings, they always say the secret ingredient to food is love. Uh, it's deeper than that. The secret ingredient in the, in the food that foundational black Americans cook, it's the Majara spirit. That's the love you're talking about. That's the soul. That's that. It's the Majara spirit. That's what's in it. We have that, 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 that little flavor, that little flair that sweetens up everything that we touch. Everything we touch has that flair in it. And the way we prepare the food, the, the love and the care and the concern and the looking out for people and the genuine sensitivity that we have for the people that we're feeding, you can taste that in the food. That's why our food is so good. That's why our food is so good, because we have a spirit. That's, listen, everything we do, there's a. it's all about soul. Soul food, soul music. Yeah? We put the soul in it, and that soul is the Mojara. The soul is the Mojara. That's that God energy, that God spirit that was infused in foundational black Americans to not only make us survive the most traumatic incident in recorded history, but to step out of it and influence the world. That was a God spirit that was giving into, given into us, guys. That's why we touch things and it's magical almost. You see? I, I don't want to hear, when we, when we cook food, don't tell me about no damn Scotland. And to keep it a buck, I don't want them to keep kind of giving credit to certain African stuff either. No disrespect to our African brothers and sisters, but the way we prepare food is way different. That's another thing. We 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 do something, then they start talking about, well, in Africa, well, on the slave ship, they brought some recipes with them. That don't make no sense. Hold on, before you enslave me, let me go get my cookbook. Some of them stories don't even make no sense that we brought some recipes and some bell peppers and some sweet potatoes on the slave ship from, that don't make no damn sense. Yeah? We, uh, we prepare the food a little bit different. The energy of the food is different. You dig? We don't eat or prepare food for the most part like they do in Africa. And, no, and that's no disrespect. Let, let's keep it above. The, the energy in Africa is different. I, 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 know, I don't want to seem like I'm beating up on Africa. The energy in Africa is way different. The en Let's keep it a buck. General is a hostile energy. It's dog eat dog. Everybody's trying to get over it. It's a different type of energy. Not with everybody, but people trying to get the hell out. It's very hostile. The loving energy ain't there like it should be. I mean, look, look at this. Like, Think of like the way we prepare soul food. I put this clip up the other day. Think of the way we prepare soul food and the love and the care and how beautiful it is and it looks all good. That's why we take pictures of the plate. Ooh, shit. Ooh, look at this. Yeah. We get it. We want to take pictures of it. It's art, ain't it? We get us some good soul food. It's like art. Man, will y'all look at this? I'm Hurry up and get this. I'm about to get busy with this shit. It looks good. The flavor is good. The way it's positioned. Oh, my God. Yeah? But family, come on. This, this is different right here. This, come on. We don't we don't get down like this. Uh, come on. What, uh, come on. Hold on. My family. Bismillah. Family, 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 family. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Y'all talking about we got some shit. We got something from that. 
Come on now. That, that's don't don't give credit to our stuff to come on man. Come on. We we don't do that. I'm not my what my African brothers, I'm not trying to dump on y'all, but we that's not. We don't we don't do that. We don't do that. They're eating zebra stew. I don't know what the, I don't know what none of that is on that plate. I don't know what one thing is on that plate. I, all I know is it has teeth and hooves, and they didn't, they're slopping it up. I don't know what that is. Yeah. So that, that's a different energy right there. I don't, I don't like them trying to give credit to all of our stuff. Every time we do something with Open West African, y'all, no, no, no. Some stuff we just created. All right. There's some stuff that we create. Yeah, some Asians eat like that too. Yeah. We don't eat like that. No, we don't eat like that. You don't see us eating all sloppy like that. Because grandma and them wouldn't let you eat like that. Grandma don't want you messing up her damn tablecloth. Y'all know good and well we couldn't eat like that. Granny would whoop our ass if we told her had all that shit on her tablecloth. Your grandma wouldn't let you even hold the refrigerator open too damn long. You're letting the air out, nigga. <laughs> Close that damn frigid air. We couldn't eat sloppy like that. We ain't never ate. Come on, man. <laughs> we couldn't leave bread out on the tables. Get these breads out before we get roaches in here. Come on, man. There's a love and an energy. That we as foundational black Americans, we put into our cuisine. There's that energy. And like I said, going back to the country music thing, we got a lot of people in here. Everybody give me a retweet. Everybody give me a retweet. Retweet this, let everybody know that we're live right now. But going back to Beyonce and country, this whole thing where... We got to get permission from them for a genre we created. No, thank you. We take our genres back. They kind of, they try to hijack our genres and then tell us we're guests in genres that we created. This is why we got the film microphone check coming because that's what they will try to do with hip hop. 50 years from now, they will try to sit up and make it seem like a black rapper. Oh, you, you're overstepping your boundaries, buddy. That's why we got to put the, the clamp down on the culture and let folks know what it is. That was never done with country in the early days because our brothers and sisters, they didn't have the resources to, to go out here and create a media apparatus to really tell the truth. I think some black newspapers here and there might have spoken up about it, but we didn't have the massive uh, international reach that we do now. You understand? But with... Um, our sister Beyonce and country music. That is our genre. That is something that Foundation of Black Americans created. And like I said, the white people know. They'll give it up. Well, there's a clip that somebody posted up, and this guy said everything that I was saying about how these early white country artists got all of their stuff from black folks. Hold on. This white dude. They'll tell the truth. They don't, this is not a secret. Hold on. If you look at some of the greatest names in the Country Music Hall of Fame, the Carter family. The Carter family. Bill Monroe. Bill Monroe. Hank Williams. Hank Williams. Each one of these people learned directly from an African-American musician. Not just indirectly, not from records. They actually had a mentor who sat down with them and showed them how to do things. Absolutely. Why people are saying this shit? Which is true. That's 100% true, ladies and gentlemen. That's one. They proudly, because see, when they started doing country music, it was first white people putting on blackface, getting banjos and stuff, and doing minstrel shows. They were doing minstrel shows. They were mocking black people at first. And then some of them decided, okay, let's just take the blackface off and just, you know, put our own little thing on it and just do it as ourselves. Just like Al Jolson. Al Jolson had the blackface on Mammy Mammy, and then the song Mammy became a big hit. You see? So they were sitting here imitating black people and then just say, hey, man, let's just run with it. But all of the country legends 
When you look at those guys, I can point to the black person that they got the game from. We can point to the black people they got the game from. Hank Williams, that's, a, that's one. He learned from a black man foundation, a black American brother named Rufus Payne, who taught him. Hank Williams was like, what, eight years old? And I think Rufus was living at a boarding house that his mama was running. And um, Rufus Payne taught Hank Williams how to play the banjo and how to sing and everything. They even got a, a plaque up in, um, hold on, where is this? They got a plaque up in, um, I think it's Montgomery, Alabama. They got this right here. They got a plaque up there telling you, Rufus Payne, T-Tot, mentor of Hank Williams. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. That's black man, foundational black American brother. So this is not a secret. But the thing is, we let these people run with our creations for so long and, and we don't remind them. They start talking like we didn't give it to them. Because we didn't moved on to so many other things. And then when you own something, you didn't took a hold of something and owned it and stole it and held on for it to it so long. You start getting real funny style about the people who you took it from. Yeah, it's not a secret, it's just forgotten. These people have some nerve trying to talk greasy about us tapping back into a genre that we completely created 100%. So yeah, don't let them say nothing slick. Hit them with the history. Yeah, Rufus Payne died in a homeless shelter. Yeah, wasn't his grave unmarked for a long time? Yeah, the dude who helped create a whole genre, our foundational black American family members sitting up here poor, uh, the grave ain't got no headstones on it, and these people are making a gazillion dollars in the dominant society. Yeah? You see? So yeah, this is why, family, gatekeep the culture. We're claiming it back. Don't let people try to shame us into saying, oh God, you guys are being so divisive. If hip-hop it was for everybody. Why are you black and brown, black and brown, nothing? We're talking about a foundational black American creation. Everybody else got it from us. That's what it is. We're gatekeeping everything. You see? And speaking of Beyonce and Destiny's Child and all of those guys, did y'all see what was going on with um, our sister Kelly Rowland? Kelly Rowland was supposed to be a guest host on... The Today Show. And she didn't, apparently, allegedly, didn't like the dressing rooms. The dressing rooms were kind of janky, I'm assuming. So she just bounced. She, I'm out. And you got Bethany Frankel, who done hopped up here, wagging her finger at Kelly Rowland. And a lot of people felt a certain way about this, as do I. Now, Bethany Frankel, wasn't she on one of these housewives shows, from what I understand or from what I heard? She was complaining about the conditions for the white women, you see? Uh, allegedly, I don't know. This is what I heard, because I don't watch too many of those shows. But Bethany Frankel has some little words for Kelly Rowland. The white mommy's going to reprimand the little uppity negress. This is her kind of trying to reprimand Kelly Rowland. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. Let's let's break this down. Hold on. Wait a minute. Off the set of the Today Show because the dressing room wasn't up to par. She was co-hosting with Hoda and it wasn't it. I've co-hosted with Hoda and I've arrived there and the makeup area that you touch up in is often a drop cloth, like a black drop cloth. And then your dressing room is the size of a closet and you're trying to fit all your people in the clown car. And you know what? You're so excited. You're so no, that speak for yourself. You're Bethany Frankel, the reality woman. You know I mean, you're not Kelly Rowland or on that level, ma'am. So gracious. You're co-hosting on the Today Show an institution in entertainment, a news organization that is not about fancy dressing rooms. The makeup area is completely communal. The food is like grab a croissant and some plastic and pray for the best. And it's just not what that's about. And it's an honor to be there and to sit down with Hoda. And that was...
was not the moment for diva expectations. Man, please. I, I, I knew the word diva was coming. I, I, I can smell the word diva coming. Let me tell you something. First of all, Kelly Rowland is a superstar from a superstar group, one of the biggest girl groups in recorded history. Kelly Rowland accomplished something throughout the years as a phenomenal artist. You're a reality show woman. And then you made some good business deals, Bethany. Bethany made some, she kind of finessed and, and worked the reality show game and got some big money doing that. But you're not a Kelly Rowland. You can't sit here and tell Kelly Rowland what she should and should not accept. Kelly is used to certain treatment. Kelly Rowland is an icon. And you're not going to treat me. I'm, I'm speaking as Kelly. You, you're not going to treat me like I'm new booty. Yeah, what does it have to do with Bethany Frankel anyway? What the hell does she have to do with any of this stuff? Yo, our sister Kelly was like, hey, I ain't feeling this. So yeah, y'all, this ain't for me. I'm used to better stuff than this. So yeah, I'm out. I don't blame her. This goes back to that whole thing where Hollywood tries to get sisters and, and black men too to throw little crumbs and we're supposed to be grateful that we're in the room with them. Bethany Frankel talking about, well, today's show, that's an institution. That, to you? That ain't no institution to us. That's an institution to you and your community. You know, what does that mean for us? That's not, you're not doing Kelly Rowland a favor. Kelly Rowland, she's a, an international superstar and an icon. She don't need the Today Show. You understand? They're so used to the, the when a black female entertainer comes in or whatever, or a black man or whatever, they're supposed to be grateful that we're allowing you in here. So yeah, go to that dressing room down there and get a croissant, Negro. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm a pretty big deal. So when I come in, I want things laid out a certain way. So when y'all get that together, holler at me. Yeah? Shout out to Kelly Rowland for not accepting janky Motel 6 ass behavior. All of us don't have to accept that. You know, Taraji P. Henson and those guys running around here crying about the set of Color Purple. We, they, oh, oh, I ain't make no money. They had us driving around our own rental cars. I had to get a budget rental to go on set. They love that. They love that us crying and begging for can Oprah, can you come call over? Come get me. Oh, call Tyler Barry to come get me. They love that. Kelly, Kelly was <laughs> Kelly went in there like, what is this bullshit? I'm out. Y'all holler at me. I'll co-host this when y'all get it together. This ain't it for me. The dressing room ain't it. Uh, where's the hair and makeup? I ain't got no. Yeah, if I'm gonna go on TV, I'm gonna have a glam squad. Have some from a glam squad. Y'all you know, got to set this up better for me. Monique didn't accept it. Shout out to Monique. Walk off. I done told y'all before. I, I walked out of a, a meeting. And I've told the story a million times before out in Hollywood. There was a, a, a big talent agency. They were hollering at me about doing a TV show. They, kept, they were hollering at me. And then they invited me up there to the office over in Century City. And I'm in the in the lobby waiting on the meeting. The meeting was supposed to be at four or something like that. And I'm seeing superstar after superstar walking in and out of this place. This big, big agency. Big agency. And I'm sitting in the lobby looking at all of these big name actors and superstars walk in and out. Then I'm realizing, I'm like, okay, the meeting is at four. It's 4.45. So I left. I'm like, damn this. I got things to do. I got better shit to do than sit up in this. Oh, there's a lot of great superstars in here. I got better things to do to sit in this lobby. In fact, 
I felt insulted. I'm like, wait, well, they really, they don't really want to do business like that if, if they got me waiting in here. They must not really want to do no good business. And now the fact that I'm sitting in here for 45 minutes, I don't really want to do business with them because now if I do business with them, they're going to think they can treat me any kind of way. I don't want to be, I got, I literally got better shit to do than sit in somebody's office for 45 minutes. I got money to make. And when I left, they were so, they called me, a, they called me an hour later after I left. What happened? You left? Oh my God, why'd you leave? We had such and such here and such and such was at the office and the, 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 the partners were here and this, and this producer was here. Like, dude, y'all had me waiting for 45 minutes. Yeah, but man, that's just the business, man. That happened. That ain't my business, dude. I got shit to do. I got better shit to do. I'm not sitting in no damn office waiting on you. I know because if y'all want to do business, y'all come get me. Let's do some business. Yeah, got to have some dignity and self-respect, man. You got to have dignity and self-respect. They'll try your ass. Yeah, they wasted my time. I was offended. I was offended by that. Yeah? Because I don't need them. I never needed them. Yeah? That's why you see all these black actors out here complaining now. They, they ain't getting no money. And I knew that. And I'm like, y'all, the money y'all offering ain't really that much for me to sit here and wait for no 45 minutes for. Y'all not y'all not offering me anything that's that would make it conducive for me to sit in an office waiting around like that. Yeah, go find somebody else. Waste their time. Go find some struggling actor, or whoever. I'm not starving. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the fact that they tried to check our sister Bethany Frankel, tried to tell our sister Calandria, Calandria. That's her real name, Calandria, and I like that name. I like that name better than Kelly. They're gonna try to check Calandria about what she needs to damn do and don't be a diva. Anytime black women have some kind of self-respect, oh, you're being a diva. Oh, God, she's so angry. She's being a diva. <laughs> oh, God, she's, watch out for her. And speaking of um, people trying to check folks, there was, some, there was a video of some, some Palestinian protesters um, yelling at Floyd Mayweather. And, um, hold on, let me play this clip. They were yelling at Floyd Mayweather about Palestine and all this stuff. Um, hold on, look at this. So they go show up at a Floyd Mayweather event basically troll protesting him. But I put up some, why are they always trying to target black folks? And then they jumped in my mentions talking about, well, Floyd Mayweather was supportive of Israel. So, so what? Floyd Mayweather ain't got nothing to do with that war over there, nor does any other black person. That ain't no excuse to go up there and troll and whine to Floyd Mayweather who can't do nothing about what's going on over there in Israel or Palestine. They just look for any excuse to go holler at black folks and then project their anger and jealousy and hate on black people. It has nothing to do with them. I don't give a damn if he did shout out Israel and give support. No matter if we give support to Palestine, then the Michael Rappaports are going to come out talking greasy about black folks. It's always an excuse to start dumping on foundational black Americans. It's always some damn excuse. That's all it was trolling. All right, what do you want Floyd Mayweather to do? Floyd shouted out Israel, so what do you want him to do? They always run to the people, foundation of black Americans who ain't done a damn thing to you. Go holler at the people who are subjugating you. If you have a problem, holler at the people giving you the problem. Y'all always find a reason to detour over in our faces to whine to us so that we can fight for you. 
They always want to, that's what that's really about. Because we're generally neutral about something. So if we give any other side a shout out, all the, hey, black Americans, hey, hey, what about us? Hey, Joe, why are you giving your energy to him? What about us? What about us? You see? Because, see, they want that Majara energy. See, when we start leaning, using our foundational Black American Mojara energy and giving it somewhere or, or lending it out, oh, it's, it's, it's valuable. It's like vibranium. Why are you giving it to them and not us? Why are you giving them that energy and we need it? You understand? People always trying to grasp our energy so that they could use that to elevate themselves. They're always trying to get that energy because that energy, they understand the power in it. That divine Majara energy is foundational black Americans that we possess. Family, they want it. Because when we lend that energy to people, they get their freedom. They get to rise up. See, we did the um, with, with South Africa. We lend that energy to them. When they had the Soweto uprising, we were lending our energy. They saw what we were doing. They saw what we were doing in the civil rights movement, and they took some of that energy. And also, foundational black Americans, we were speaking up for the brothers and sisters in South Africa. It was brothers and sisters here who were letting the U.S. know, y'all need to put sanctions on the white supremacist apartheid government of South Africa. Y'all need to do that. Because we're making noise on the international streets about what's happening out here in South Africa and you governments, the U.S. government, y'all sitting up here propping these people up. Let, let's be very clear. The white supremacists in the U.S. government, they were in full support of the South African government. Let's be real clear about that. Because see, Negroes from other places love to give props to white mommy and white daddy over here. Let me tell y'all something. Over there in the diaspora, white mommy and white daddy, they were over here helping the white mommies and white daddies decimate your homeland. Remember, the U.S. government was propping up the South African government. In fact, it was um, the, the, the CIA from over here who was telling people where um, Mandela was hiding. The CIA from over here gave up Mandela in the 1960s. In 1962, it was the CIA who gave up Mandela, you see? So we get on their bumpers over here and let them know, hey, man, y'all got to do the right thing, man. What, what's happening over there? Nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. Yeah? Yeah, Jeffrey Osborne made a song called Soweto. Yeah, um, um, remember Gil Scott Heron? Gil Scott Heron, what's the word, Johannesburg? What's the word, Johannesburg? What, that record 1977, 78? We were riding heavy for um, South Africa. We spoke up for South Africa. We were giving them that energy. We've always spoken up for brothers and sisters. And when we start speaking up for them, things start to change. Things start to happen. We have a divine energy family. We as foundational, uh, foundational black Americans, we have a, a divine energy. And they know it. And speaking of divine energy, y'all better get this root work. This root work deodorant. Got to get that root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. Rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking of the motherland. And this is something that's very disturbing. Family, have y'all heard about what's going on allegedly over there in Gambia? There's reports coming out, and it, it's kind of all over the place, but there's a lot of people making videos, and there's a lot of reports coming out that a lot of foundational black American women and also sisters from the um, UK and other places are going over there to Gambia and getting targeted and getting offed over there in Gambia. Have y'all been hearing this? I've been hearing a lot of sisters have been getting offed over there in Gambia. And it's a, it's a lot of disturbing stuff coming out, man. This sister right here, 
somebody said that this sister might have been offed because she made a video talking about how she was being stalked. She was over there living in Gambia and she was talking about how she was being stalked. Let me play this. Somebody said this sister's no longer with us. I'm trying to, what's her name? Ani Africa? Oh, man. Let me play some of this sister here and listen to what she's saying about what's going on over there. Hold on. You see, I don't think I have it. You know, I take pictures on both of my phones. So let me see what I got here. Hold on. Hold on. Give me one second. Hold on. Let me fast forward it some. Hold yeah. On. And so from what I understand, like she's been targeting me, like trying to copy me copy my content, has even stolen things from me. I didn't know about any of it. These things are only re work as a team. So I, they claim that they are like brother and sister, but you know, with all the demonic wickets to come on and expose this. Hold on, trying to see what she said. She right, we have to talk about it. Either crazy or you must be a whore if you want to be alone. Because there's no level of respect with that. Yeah. You know what, though? I haven't really had anyone knocking at my door. What I have had, because, you know, in order for people to get to your door, they have to get through the compound gate. The compound gate is about 25 yards away. So you have to get past them big steel gates. But don't think they won't jump the gate. They will jump the gate, jump the wall, jump the whole wall. Be banging on your door for 20, 30 minutes at a time like they're going to make you open the door. I've had that happen one time. Wow. I didn't open the door. Don't come to my house unannounced. Don't do that. And then when you're outside the gate calling me like, oh, I was at your house. I was knocking. You didn't answer the door. I didn't answer the door because you didn't have an invitation to come to my home. Don't ever do that. Okay. Okay. So. I, I, I got to go through this video, but this is just one of them. This sister was just, again, she was kind of complaining about some of the stuff that was happening over there. And there's sisters over there in Gambia complaining, and then they, they ended up they ended up missing and offed. And, and I'm, I'm hearing this is going on real heavy in Gambia. Yeah, the police are in on it, family. Y'all need to get up, up out of some of those spots, man. Family, to be real, y'all need to raise up out of them spots. Sisters, especially sisters by themselves, foundational black American women, don't be going over there by yourself, sister. See, the thing is that that Pan-African package has been sold and folks think you're going to go over here and ain't no, you be around a bunch of black folks. And a, a lot of black people go over there thinking that you're going to run into the same black people that's here with that same foundational black American Mojara spirit. Because we know, truth be told, Dusty nigga shit is real rare. That that's not a part of our culture. That's is really not. When 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 foundational Black Americans are on our own, doing things on our own without any intervention, we're good. We're good. Going over there, we think we're gonna run in people, run into people with the same energy. It's a whole different energy. It's a whole different energy, unfortunately. And people going over there. With Wakanda vision, yeah, they, they keep trying to sell Africa as like a utopia where you can just eat mangoes on the plains and, and ride a giraffe and everybody's walking around in dashikis using shea butter. No, no, that's not what it is. Over there... It's a lot of decimated societies. The remnants of the white supremacists is still there. These nations that were created by the white supremacists. I keep telling y'all, y'all not going to listen. You're not going to tap into some type of cultural continuity.
from ancient times because it's not there. Their cultural continuity has been broken and severed several, time, several times over. We, as foundational Black Americans, we have a longer cultural continuity than they do over there. No, no, no disrespect. Shout out to my African brothers and sisters who's listening. I'm not trying to dump on you. Y'all know what it is over there. Y'all know it's cutthroat over there. It's cutthroat. People trying to get the hell out. Um, people are desperate, starving, musty. Will, uh, that spirit of the white supremacists is fresh in the psyche over there. And in too many places, not everybody, not everybody. I'm not saying everybody's like this. But the thing is, when they see a foundational black American, these folks see a lick. When they see us moving over there, see, visiting is one thing, but moving over there, there's contempt. They see, okay, this is the new victim, and this person ain't protected by nobody, so I can hit them up and knock them up out of here. Yeah? You're not tapping in to some long, lost, ancient continuity. You're not. There's a video of this brother from Africa, and finally, somebody said what I've been telling people, that they are over there, a lot of people over there lying about their ancient past. They don't have no long-standing ancient knowledge. And I, I respect this brother for being honest right here. This brother right Get here. Get ready to ignite the spirit of black history. Wrong thing. I'm playing the wrong thing. I'm messing up. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me find a thing. But this brother right here is being honest about what's going on over there. And I respect this brother's honesty. I respect this brother's honesty right here. Now, he tells the truth. And I've been saying this for the longest. Now, listen to what this brother said about this we know where we're from stuff where people try to throw in our faces foundational black Americans. We don't know who we are and all of that. Listen to this African brother. We know where we're from. <laughs> Most of us can't tell you two generations. Let me take a bath. Africans, we lie a lot as if we know where we're from. <laughs> Most of us can't tell you two generations past True. where we are from. And I've had the privilege of traveling in Africa a lot as well. And my identity is ubiquitous. Right? It's nobody could tell where I'm from by looking at me. When I'm in Nigeria, they think I'm Igbo. <laughs> I could go to Ghana, they think I'm Ghanaian. The average Gambian may look at me and look at us and say, you don't look Gambian. I'm just African. Mm -hmm. So, and part of the book is there's a chapter I talk about life as a hyphen where I'm African. I think I'm from the Western part of Africa. That's what I identify the strongest with is my identity as an African, but I have a Gambian cultural background and heritage Africans, we lie a lot All as right. if we know where we're from. <laughs> All right. So this guy said the loud, the, the quiet part out loud. He's telling the truth, which is that I've been telling y'all this. I've been telling people this. I said, family, stop letting folks run this game on us where they project talking about you FBA niggas don't know where you are from. That's the biggest con game. We, you niggas are not like, at least I know my heritage. No, you don't. You don't. They can only go back a few generations. They don't, they don't keep records like that. Those are not old ancient tribes. We keep telling you this. These are not old ancient tribes at all. These tribes have been remixed, thrown together, flopped together, this person thrown on that person, that person thrown on that. They're not ancient tribes. They're not, they don't have no long-standing ancient cultural continuity. They just don't. That's not to insult our brothers and sisters over there. We're not trying to insult you, but we don't want people coming over here wagging the finger. You niggas don't know who you are. We have our own language. No, not really. Your language comes from oppressors' languages. Many of those languages over there 
come from the Portuguese, comes from the Arabs. Swahili is an Arab, basically an amalgamation of an Arab language. The word Swahili is damn near Arab. It's an Arabic word almost. Swahili is an Arabic word. The root of it is Arabic. You think? It's rooted in, in Arabic words. Swahili. In a lot of those different languages over there. They, they were remixed and thrown together. They Come on, man. They were re, Y'all were remixed over there. So yeah, we, we don't want, we're not throwing nobody under the bus, but don't come over here wagging the finger as if your cultural continuity is longer and stronger than ours. It's not. Our cultural continuity is deep-rooted. Yeah? Our cultural continuity is deeply rooted. Huh? So we got to stop people. Yeah, y'all, a lot of y'all don't, people don't know that. They come over here and run that game on us. They've been running that game. And see, the thing is, white society, they want them to run that game on us because white society, they'll give you an African studies course. They want us learning about Wakanda and all of these ancient African civilizations so we can keep our eyes off of here so they can make us feel like perpetual guests on our homeland. See, when we start claiming our homeland here, that's when the white supremacists get ruffled up. When we start looking in them records and we're like, hey, wait a minute. My great granddad was Choctaw. What the hell? What? Oh, no, 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 no. There was a, there was a mistake in the paperwork. They, they, they meant to write chocolate. <laughs> because when we start saying, hey, we, hey, some of these damn tribes, my great granddad was in this tribe. Oh, what was that? Because see, now. We can start saying, hey, this land, some of these land claims, where's my land claim check? See, now we can start letting them know, hey, man, you're on our ancestral land. See, when we look at it from that perspective, because I look at it from that perspective anyway, because this country was built by Foundation of Black Americans. We are indigenous to the United States. We are the first aboriginal group to what become the to what had become the United States because we built it from scratch yeah the trail of tears those uh, half of them they say about 30 percent I say is probably about half of them coming out from Florida going into Oklahoma and all of that because they made a treaty with the U.S. government the Seminoles were whooping ass so much in Florida General Jessup had something called Jessup's Proclamation, and we talk about this in the movie American Maroon. He was like, look, we can't put these niggas back on no plantation. We can't put John Horse and them black Seminoles. We can't. First of all, they're not going to go into slavery. Every time we try to put them into slavery, they whoop our ass. And two, if they were to go on the plantation, they're going to rile everybody up and turn up again. So let's just get them out of Florida. So they made a deal after the Seminoles killed all the white people down there in Florida. They just made a deal with them. Hey, just y'all just go. Yo, bye. Just go. Just leave. Go to Florida. I mean, go to Oklahoma. There's Indian territory. Just go way out there. That's why Oklahoma has a whole bunch of different black towns out there. Y'all know that? You got Wawoka. There's a lot of um, black founded towns all over Oklahoma. Oklahoma has a whole bunch of black-founded towns out there. I think they got the most in the nation, black-founded towns out there in Oklahoma. There's, a, there's no coincidence why the Black Wall Street was out there. You see? Real heavy game. You see? So Y'all yeah, need to learn about John Horse and so many other people. This book right here. Hidden Heroes from A to Z. You get this at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. We got so much great game in this book. Great stuff in this book, man. And um, this is a great book to get your kids started on. We talk about John Horse. Speaking of John Horse, we talk about him in here. This is what your kids need to be learning about. Black greatness. Black excellence and black greatness. You dig? That Mojara spirit coming from these phenomenal foundational black Americans. We even talk about like a couple of Moors in here. 
we talk about this was a Moor named Ziriab. We talk about him, a very influent, very influential Moor who lived in El Andalus, Spain, who was very instrumental in grooming habits of the Europeans. He helped them get their grooming habits together. Yeah. Real talk. It's Kevin Samuels from Oklahoma. That's what's up. Man. Yes, indeed. But family, you know, we, we got to gatekeep that culture. We got to gatekeep that culture. There's nothing wrong with gatekeeping our culture. Don't let people try to shame us as if we're being divisive for saying, hey, man, we don't want people coming into our culture um, trying to make us feel like we're guests in something that we created. You understand? We're putting a check on that. Is Man No, we don't have Mansa Musa in that book, but you can check it out. <clears throat> and also, if you're in L.A., come down to the Hidden History Museum this coming Saturday. Yeah, somebody said Charlie Wilson was from Oklahoma. In fact, that's y'all know the story of the Gap Band. They're from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they named their, their group the Gap Band after the Tulsa Race Massacre. Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. That's what GAP stands for. So Uncle Charlie, he understood. That's why Uncle Charlie Wilson is one of the greatest R&B singers alive today. He had that Majara spirit. Uncle Charlie had that Majara spirit growing up in Tulsa, seeing what went down in Tulsa, being around that Seminole energy, being around that soul and that, that FBA energy. He knows. That's why that brother's been so prolific. And he just got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Very proud of Uncle Charlie Wilson. One of the best in the business. Yeah, they did that song, You Dropped the Bomb on Me, about them bombing that place. Remember, Charlie Wilson grew up in, in, in Tulsa with that energy there. He was on code. A, li a living legend. You, you dig? Love Charlie. Every time, I've seen Charlie Wilson about 20 times in concert. Every time he's in concert, I make a point to go see him. Yeah? yeah but anyway, man. Let me get up out of here, man. Microphone check coming soon. Um, go to rootworkstyle.com to get your root work deodorant. Get this lucky lavender. It has that high John the Conqueror root in it. You think this is root work here? When you mix that high John the Conqueror with that lavender, see, this gives you that mojo energy. See, this is why they would they would use these things to, to win in court. That's why I've been winning so many court dates. I go into these court dates. I be going into, into court with this root work on. That's why I be winning these court dates left and right. I have that high John the Conqueror energy in this root work. That FBA energy is real, ladies and gentlemen. That thing is real, and our ancestors knew it. That Mojara energy is not no joke, family. Anyway, I'm up out of here, man. Y'all be good. Share the broadcast. I'm a holla. Peace. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com 